to pick up Batman the Signal this week. Done by the world's greatest Scott Snyder, so, uh... Do I need to read it, or do I... I'm done with Scott Snyder. He's, 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 he's fired. There does come a point where I have to awesome, look at him thanks. and go, yep, nope, not happening. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Did you read the last issue of Dark, the Dark Metal? Yeah. I thought that was one of the biggest pieces of poo I've ever uh, read. Right. I am off the Scott Snyder bandwagon. People worship the guy like he's the greatest coming of right. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. I think he's gone downhill for a long time. Someone's going to have to come in and tell me that that Batman and the Signal is really good for me to pick it up and read it now. Okay. If he puts out another Severed book, yeah. I'll try it. Yeah. But his superhero stuff is just... I wish he would kind of get moved toward like maybe Image or something else and do some some of his like uh, his independent stuff. Like, mm -hmm. But what he's doing with these characters is just... I just don't... I just don't care. There's a few people who will say, oh man, this book was good. It doesn't really matter because of the, they think everything that everything by Scott Snyder is just good anyway. So I can't use them yeah. as a... As a barometer, yeah. you know, it's... There are writers that I, I'm i like that with, that I'm like, no matter what they put out, I will read it. Like, yeah. Brian K. Vaughn or, like, Mark Millar, but, like... Well, Scott Snyder was, was one of those guys for me, too. He what? Yeah. Scott Snyder was one of those guys? I used to read anything that he would do, anything he would, uh, he would write. His detective, before they did the New 52, that Severed book was fantastic. Severed was really good, I liked yeah. part of his New 52 Batman, but then I got sick, I got sick of it. Yeah. Um, did he do The Wake? I yeah. loved it for, like, the first half. Yeah. Did he do Witches? Yeah, he did witches. Yeah, I don't like that either. I didn't either. I think a lot had to do with the, with how they ruined um, his artwork with those color splotches they threw. Kind they of annoyed th the hell out yeah. of me. Yeah. 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 Like I, I get that once in a while for an impact, but not every freaking panel and every freaking yeah, page. Every single one. I like some of his stuff, but I mm. won't. I won't buy a book just because. If it's an ind if this was an independent book, I probably would. Yeah. I'd probably be like, I'll buy this with Scott Snyder's name on it, but. With one of these, I, I just... And I don't really... I didn't really care for any of the New 52 stuff that he did, so I was just like, all right, well... Whichever the first six six issues was of that, I didn't like it all. I almost dropped it. But the second part of the Owls the Owl storyline that was like 7 through 12, yeah. I thought was really was really See, good. and I didn't pick it up because I heard such bad things about the first part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually and, got better at it. And I thought the second part... I thought the second part was, re was really decent. Hmm. I thought that whole year one, those year zero, whatever it was. Oh, zero year? Yeah. If you could have just read all Riddler parts, it yeah. was great. Yeah. But every other issue, every other issue was good. The other issue stunk. It was hard to follow, too. Like, yeah. I, I was just like, where are we right now? What? No. That's when they did that Joker, Justice League. Everyone had, was, had a smiley. That's when I just closed the book. I said, <laughs> you, you've been fired. You're, You're terminated. Silver Sable was awesome. Really? I can't believe it. I picked it up. Uh, I liked the old Silver Sable book at one time. Yeah. Um, it was like, re reading it. Man, I wish. And this, believe it or not, was actually good. Dark, Dark Hawk. Hawk. Yeah. Really? Remember in the old guard, the the good Guardians of the Galaxy, the Abnet and Landing, and then we're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, Dark Hawk was had a, had a thing that was going on in there too, um, before uh, Bendis ruined the Guardians right. of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. I don't want to trash on Bendis because the guy's almost dead. He was in the hospital for a while. He had MRSA. Oh, God. Um, okay, in that case, I'll give the guy a little space. No, but, but that just happened. The crap that he was writing before that, he was still at full. He was still, hey, I'm at full speed, but. Yeah, over the over the last couple of months, he's actually almost died twice, and he's been in the hospital twice with with MRSA. Wow. But why? So, because his writing is that bad. That's why. Oh! I'm not down on Bendis. Abner Land doesn't get enough credit for bringing back the the space of beings of Marvel back into the forefront. They're the ones that they're the ones that that brought that in. Yeah. Um. It just so happens that you know after they cancel it all. The movies come out. Bendis takes it over. He looks like he looks like a hero. Yeah. Um. But Abnett and Landing is the guys. That Speaking of Guardians, I in that box of books that my brother found, uh, found an Iron Man 55, first Thanos and first God, Drax. And Drax. Destroyer. Wow. Nice. Yeah. It's in nice. real nice shape too. You selling that to me? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I think you want to hang on to that no. one. No. Uh, Maybe I'll just keep this one for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I don't know what. Uh, what you know, any idea what that's going for right now or? A lot. Yeah? yeah, it seemed yeah. like it. I was like, yeah. I, I was kind of started cruising online. I checked my comic book price guide, but it's from like 2012, yeah. 2011. Yeah. And it was like, I think it had like like 125, 150 bucks <laughs> on it. And I was like, I was like, wow, that seems kind of low for yeah. those characters. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, it was before the Avengers movie yeah. came yeah. out. Yeah. I was like, oh, that'll do it. All right, I gotta get out of here. Let's uh, let's do this before I get cold feet. <laughs> uh, I did. A couple of things for Clive Barker's Nightbreed and Hellraiser, and I was going to take over on two of the different Barkerverse books when they were running. I did a piece for Iron Man that never got published, but they paid me, so I can't complain.
So I was doing an eight-page eight piece called Return of the Demon. It was nothing but Tony Stark having a really bad day and seriously contemplating a drink and finally deciding against it. But before that an that annual could come out, uh, he was fired, along with, again, with all the other people that I knew, and they just decided against it. Again, I still got paid, so I can't complain about that part. And then everybody that I knew at Marvel Comics got fired at the same time, so that pretty much ended my entire career. My biggest problem with Marvel these days is that at least half of their artists can't draw. I wanted to be a comic artist in the beginning, and I wasn't good enough. It was just that simple. And if I can draw better than they can draw, I'm not buying their comic. So we need to actually start paying artists and actually getting good artists again. DC's running circles around them right now in the art department. It's just that simple. Alan Moore, before he completely lost his mind, and I'm convinced he completely lost his mind, Tom King is really, really great. Mike Mignola's a lot of fun. I'm loving what's going on with this. And I'm, so, I'm like a 50-50 split on Jeff John. Sometimes I really like his stuff and sometimes I don't. That I'm appreciating a lot. Because he's doing an homage to the entire Watchmen thing and he's doing it the right way. He's not pandering to it. He's not going as, with that as the primary basis for anything that he's done. But he's having a good time with it. And he's honoring the, the memory of what was done originally. He's following the same kind of format, which is mostly nine page, nine panels per page, which is impressive and hard for an artist. But as a rule, I thought the Watchmen movie was pretty good. I can see why they took the changes that they did. I would have liked to have seen them go 20 minutes longer and do the same way it was done in the book. After that, they should have immediately removed him for everything in, involving DC, because Man of Steel was an ab abomination. One of the problems is, Zack Snyder believes that every character in a comic book should be miserable and unhappy and suffering. At no point should Superman be as angsty and pissed off at the world as Batman. This is also what went wrong in the, in the DC movie universe. Why, why the hell is a man with the powers of God running around crying? Why did Clark Kent let his father die when his dad said, No, no, let the tornado take me, son, and, and hide your secret identity. I, Dad, I can go faster than a speeding bullet. I'll get you, I'll have you back over here, and nobody will notice. So too busy noticing the great big cyclone instead. That's the bullshit! Batman is Batman. He's supposed to be dark and miserable and angry and angsty and filled with rage. And Superman's supposed to be the exact opposite. You've got the guy that is, that has everything. You can't stand his life. I'm rich. And you've got the guy that was raised on a farm with nothing. The guy with the amazing powers who couldn't save his father when his father had a heart attack and still has optimism. That's a perfect dichotomy. That's the way it's supposed to be between the two of them. The angry god thing never works for me. Why is he then not a villain? Why is he supposed to be a superhero? The biggest problem that you have with Superman Returns is a director that has no freaking clue what he's doing and no idea what Superman's all about. So again, he came back whimpering and whining. Superman doesn't whine. That was the start of this entire mess, and they should have looked at the numbers on that one and gone, holy crap, we made a horrible mistake. Their life would have been better. The people have been asking for you. They love I you. Um, but, you know, I, no, I just think it's good that you're, that you're actually retired now, and you can actually get out. You got out of your, oh, I can only come between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Well, getting home, having dinner. And yeah, but you've been that. retired. You still do the same thing today. Yeah. You need, you need to spice it up. Uh, well, see, I'm spicing it up now. Look at this, I get a new a Yeah, you, you new spice bag. it up because it's snowing out tomorrow, uh, right? No, 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 I'm an old person. You don't, you don't drive in this crap. You well, you, the, you tomorrow the... you wouldn't be here anyways. Well, no, not usually, but now Friday's going to be all messed up. Cause right, gonna but I'm just saying, saying, on Friday, though, there's no reason why you can't show up, like, at 6 o'clock and hang out with a couple hours with us, you know, and, and then, or 5, I mean... Yeah, we, we have dinner, we get gas, you know, it's the routine. You're retired. You can get gas anytime. You eat dinner like a normal person. What do you oh, eat, yeah. at 7 o'clock every night? No, 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 5.30, 6. Yeah. Yeah, you know. But you call me at 6.30, I still got to eat, I got to do yeah, this. Yeah, because usually I'm fiddle farting around. He has your number? Store. Really? Store. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Amazing. Yeah, I don't want to call me at the house. Oh, all right. <laughs> you don't even let me come over to the house. I don't yeah. want you over the house yeah, I don't anymore. blame me. Yeah, yeah. Pain in the neck. I know. Two months ago, is well, you can come over in March. What, what, is, March. what is that? Right. Why don't we come over in two weeks? Or why don't we come over tomorrow? Or I haven't planned yet. You have to plan everything so. that you do. So you wake up, you sit on the edge of your bed. I do not sit on the edge of my bed. All right, bed. it's time for breakfast. No, well, if, well, when I was... When should I put my socks on first? Yeah, well, then, then, then time for breakfast. Oh, no, well, no, then no. Phil doesn't know what to do between what he would normally be doing to go to work and lunch. So he sits on the edge of his bed, waits, oh, it's time for lunch. He get, he goes down, mom makes him his lunch. No. And then um, 
And then, oh, she already prepackaged it for you. No, 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 no. So, and then, uh, and then he sits, the day comes when he's done, he sits until 5 o'clock again, he goes, oh, this is when I'd be driving home from work, then he can move around and do stuff again. But he still, he still doesn't know what to do for those eight hours. No, I've done a lot of reading. Why does it take DC yeah. so yeah. long to we tell you a decent, decent yeah. storyline? Yeah. They have I some good stories out there, but the we went through the, the new 52, yeah. we went through all the, the change and this, that, and the other, and we're back to the same old stories. Give me something I want to read. You don't have to do a new 52, just tell me something I want to read. Do what Marvel does. Give me some stories that Marvel... Captain America, Iron Man, they're telling some good stories. Can't you find some writers that can tell a good story? You used to have them. Generally, eh, it's not, it's, eh, the stories aren't, they're not what they could be. They're decent, they're not bad, but get me excited in the books again. Give me something that's interesting. And I know people are going to say, oh, everything's interesting. Mm, no, no, it's not as interesting, not to me, I'm sorry. Maybe it's because I'm an older person, a person who's read comics for over 40 years, but... It just doesn't excite me. Like I said, Marvel and DC. Uh, Marvel and uh, Marvel with uh, Captain America and Iron Man. Those have been good stories so far. Doctor Doom taking over for uh, Tony Stark. That's been a good story. They fleshed it out. It's an interesting story. Follows it through. And now we're back to finding where Tony Stark went. Good story. Do something like that, DC. You had writers from Marvel that came over to DC. Why don't you tap these people and see if they come up with something decent? I mean, Dan Didio, he came in. I'm sorry. In my opinion, DC hit the hit hit the shits. It's not worth reading anymore. Their movies are pretty good. You know, uh, mm, the the first Batman movie was good. Um, Superman, mm, not a big fan of that one. Again, Marvel, their movies were better. Iron Man, kicked ass. Captain America, kicked ass. The Avengers movies, kicked ass. DC, their movies, they, again, get some Marvel writers to write these things for you because your movies are horrible. Give me something interesting. Get a decent writing team. Red Sox, they don't have any pitching staff. Well, DC doesn't have any writing staff. Get some, get some writers in there. Elliot S. Hagen, Carrie Bates, Denny O'Neill. There were some writers from the past. Find someone like that, bring them in so they can write a story that people want to read. And the Batman I grew up with was Dennis O'Neill. Denny O'Neill's stories were the Batman stories. Well, get, like I said, a writer like that so I'm interested again. I don't need you to change the character. I don't want you to change the character. I like the character as he is. Give me something interesting. Give me a different angle on the story. Think, as they say, outside the box. Is it going to kill you? Stuff like this. Yeah, people are going to say, oh, that's boring, that's old. That is Superman. That is the character. That's what this guy has morphed into. But why don't you tell something decent? Like I said, give me some background on this. Show me some information while he's with Lois. Work on a story, you know, that they're working on on the Daily Planet. You know, the old intergang type thing. Not an intergang type story, but do something where he's going to work as Superman, she's going to work as a reporter. Show that she's an intelligent, fleshed out person. She is. The first few issues of that book, they, they did that they did that exact story. Not exact enough. Story. Not enough. Action Comics right now, I think, is the best Superman has been in thirty years. Fuck yeah. But why all of a sudden does this this take place? You we've gone through the new fifty two, we've changed everything, now we've got action comics now, and now we're telling a, a story that's fairly interesting. Where the hell was this writing years ago when you did the changeover with the new fifty two? They made a mistake. No lie. They made a mistake. So you, you don't like the new action comics? It's not bad, but I think it could be better. I think the writing is boring. People don't want to see Superman get blown into a balloon anymore or, That's true. you know, all that goofy shit from the 50s That's and 60s. True. That's true. But... For its time, that's what the new 52 has become. I don't want it to be like the old, but I want some decent, interesting stories, some decent writing that they had. Like I said, Batman back in the 70s, Denny O'Neill, good writer. He had a lot of good stories. He had a, over a decade of stories that he wrote from 70 to, what, 70 to 82, 85, he kept writing for, for Batman, and his stories were excellent. Why can't you do that now? Just find a writer who can hold my interest. And I don't need any flashy stuff and a costume change and this, that, and the other. You know, if that's what you're doing to hold somebody's interest, ooh, he's a new character, well, look, we've, we've updated his, uh, his costume, big deal. That's all, that's all you got?
It's a good thing I read Superman as a kid because, you know, I'm hoping he'll get a little bit better now. His writing certainly isn't there. My opinion, though. If Dan Didier walked in that door, I would tell him, get a writing staff who can write something that's interesting and will hold my interest. There's a good chance Dan Dino may, may even see this. And they may, they, they may say, who's that Phil guy? I want to contact him. Go right ahead. Don't give me characters that you think I want to read. Give me a story I want to read. That's all I need. I have no interest in Teenage Ninja Turtle comics whatsoever. Really? Um. Yeah, I mean, I like... I've watched really? the movies and stuff, but yeah, no, I have no interest. So, like, I don't read the IDWs. It's not about the movies. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's like... You, I, you don't buy any of them. I know. Okay, so, I mean, how good, all right? <laughs> I'm not, yeah. I'm not 12 years old anymore. All right. All right, you know, it's because uh, I get the IDW series now. I don't read any of those. I, I really don't have any interest. I don't have any interest in them. So, even when they cross over with Batman, no. Um, I did kind of like... I did read one of them, um... The Turtles, uh, Ghostbusters. I thought that was kind of fun. Was there any Marvel out this week? That's relevant? Cap? Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, it's funny, because here's yeah, Phil, just a few seconds ago, yeah, leaving, says his favorite books from Marvel is Captain America and, and Iron Man, wow. and... Here, it's funny. Here's you, the next person. Uh, Cap. Ah. Yeah, I mean, it just shows the just different tastes of different tastes of books. Like Captain America and Iron Man are mm -hmm. coming off Secret Empire. Absolutely atrocious. Yeah. I'm I mean, not, I like the story. Reading, I, I wish Chris Samney wasn't drawing it though. I mean, I, I mean, I like his art in certain things, like a kid's book. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, you know, it's. <laughs> yeah, he should not be doing Captain like a America. Book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. I just don't like how they rolled evil Steve Rogers in. I'm, I'm not... Eh. It's too easy. Way too easy. Oh, yeah. Like, at the end of Secret Empire, it's like, oh, You're now there's a Hydra agent inside. Oh, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck out of here. But, next Deadpool issue. He's got... He has to kill evil Steve. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I think that's next week, then. The Deadpool? Deadpool's on next week, yeah. That's the end of the episode. Oh my god, that's pathetic.